This is your math gal, Julie Harland. Please visit my website at yourmathgal.com where all of my videos are organized by topic. In this vi video, we are going to develop the basic trig identities you see here, three reciprocal identities, writing tangent and cotangent in terms of sine and cosine, and the Pythagorean identities All right, what you're looking at here is a review of the definition of the trig functions. If we have an angle A in standard position, and we've got its terminal side passing through this order pair x, y, so we have this length from the origin up to that point x, y, we call that r, where r is the square root of x squared plus y squared, then we defined the sine, the cosine, and the tangent, as well as the secant, the cosecant, and the cotangent in terms of x, y, and r. So the first identity I'm going to point out here is the reciprocal identities. What we see is that the sine of a is y over r, but the cosecant of a is r over y, so these are simply reciprocals. So that tells us that the sine of a is 1 over the cosecant of a, and the cosecant of a is 1 over the sine of a. And similarly, we see that cosine and secant are reciprocals, and tangent and cotangent are reciprocals. So what this tells us is any time you see the cotangent of a, you could write it as 1 over the tangent of a. So these are the reciprocal identities. All right, starting off with these definitions again, what would the sine of a over the cosine of a equal? Well, we can replace the sine of a with y over r and the cosine with x over r. And so this means y over r divided by x over r, which is y over r times the reciprocal of x over r, so that's y over r times r over x, and then we can cancel those out so that our answer is y over x. Oops. But y over x is the same thing as the tangent of a. So therefore, here is our next identity. The tangent of a is the same thing as the sine of a over the cosine of a. So we have another identity here. And that is that the tangent of a can be written as the sine of a over the cosine of a. Now remember, the tangent and cotangent, those are reciprocals of each other, so you could do the same thing, start over with the cosine of a and over the sine of a, and do the same sort of process, and you will find out that the cotangent of a is the same thing as the cosine of a over the sine of a. So in other words, if I take the reciprocal of the tangent, you can get the cotangent, and then, of course, the answer would be the reciprocal of sine a over cosine a. So you could either put the y's and r's and start out with cosine of a over sine of a and end up at cotangent of a, or just think about taking the reciprocal. All right, we're going to move on. Again, using this definition, what would cosine squared a plus sine squared a be? Remember, this is the notation for cosine of a squared. Remember, that's the way we could write it, just put the squared there. Okay. So the cosine of a is what? Well, that's x over r. So this means x over r squared. And the sine of a is y over r. So we have this. Now, if we square each of those, we get x squared over r squared plus y squared over r squared. And 
We can add the numerators because I have a common denominator, x squared plus y squared over r squared. But look up here at our definition. We have that r equals square root of x squared plus y squared. Remember, that's the same thing as writing, if we square both sides, r squared equals x squared plus y squared. All right, so whether you write it in this first form, r equals square root of x squared plus y squared, or r squared equals x squared plus y squared, we find out that x squared plus y squared is the same thing as r squared. So this gives me r squared over r squared, which is 1. So this leads us to what's called the fundamental identity in trig, the most important one to remember is that cosine squared plus sine squared, cosine squared a plus sine squared over a actually simply equals 1. This is also called the Pythagorean, uh, one of the Pythagorean identities because it came from the idea that r squared equals x squared plus y squared, similar to a squared plus b squared equals c squared for right triangles. Now what this means is for an angle or for a real number, you could put cosine squared x plus sine squared x, cosine squared of 20 degrees plus sine squared of 20 degrees. As long as the, we've got the same letter here, whatever it stands for, or the same angle or the same number, it'll always be true that that equals 1. Now you s may see this identity written a little bit differently. You might see it written as, first of all, sine squared a plus cosine squared a equals 1, okay, right? Um, you might see it written as sine squared a equals 1 minus cosine squared a. In other words, now I'm stating what the sine squared of an angle is, or of a number, by just subtracting cosine squared a from both sides. You will also see it like this. But it all comes from the main one right here, that the cosine squared a plus sine squared a equals 1, right? And, you know, you could keep on going on and on, right, fooling around with equations. For instance, if I take this equation right here, okay, I could, of course, subtract 1 from both sides, and then I would have sine squared a minus 1 equals negative cosine squared a. So in other words, you have to be able to recognize when you see these sine squares and cosine squares and a 1 or a negative 1, see if it's some form of this Pythagorean identity. You have to get used to recognizing it and just doing a little algebra to get it in a form that you like. Now if we take this basic Pythagorean identity, also called the fundamental identity, we can also find two more identities. One is if we divide both sides of the equation by sine squared a. So in other words, if I just take the first term, which is sine squared a here, and I divide both sides. All right, so sine squared a over sine squared a, that would just be 1. And what do I have over here? I have cosine squared over sine squared a. That could be thought of as the cosine of a over the sine of a squared. And on the right-hand side, what is 1 over sine squared a? Well, from our reciprocal identity, we know that's the cosecant squared a because that's 1 over sine times the 1 over sine. In fact, if you want, you could first write it that way. That's the same thing as 1 over the sine of a squared, okay? Now from our reciprocal, I'm, I'm sorry, from the previous identity, we found out that cosine of a over sine of a equals the cotangent of a. So this is the cotangent squared, right? I'd have the cotangent of a and square it, which I could write cotangent squared a. And over here I have 1 over sine a, that the reciprocal identity would be the 
cosecant of a, so this would be cosecant squared a. And this is our second Pythagorean identity, which of course you could fool around, you could say the cotangent squared of a is equal to the cosecant squared of a minus one, right? There's all sorts of ways you might write it. So here's our second one. So here was our first one, right here. Here's our second one. Now, what if instead we started with our original sine squared a plus cosine squared a equals one, and instead of dividing all three parts by the sine squared a, how about if we divided both sides of the equation by the cosine squared a instead? So we have cosine squared a, and we have to do it by all the terms on both sides of the equation. Then let's see if we could do this without writing all the steps. This will give us the sine over the cosine, right? The whole thing will be squared, but sine over cosine, remember that's the tangent. So this is the tangent squared a. Cosine squared a over cosine squared a is one. And here we have one over cosine squared a, that's like one over the cosine, all of it squared, and one over cosine is secant. So this will be secant squared a. And that is our third Pythagorean identities. So what you see here are the three Pythagorean identities. And here we have the three Pythagorean identities. So you notice the, the second and third one came from the first one. Sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals one. So if you forget one of the others, what you could do is just simply take the main identity and either divide by sine squared x to get the second one or start with the main identity and divide both sides by cosine squared x. That's how we got these two identities. So remember that the tangent and the secant are in one of the equations. The cotangent and the cosecant is in one of the other equations and the main identity the fundamental theorem is sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals one. Notice I used x instead of a. We commonly use the letter x once we're working with identities. So to summarize, here are some basic trig identities we went over. We have the reciprocal identities, the tangent and cotangent we wrote in terms of sine and cosine, and then we have the three Pythagorean identities. This is your math gal, Julie Harland. Please visit my website at yourmathgal.com where all of my videos are organized by topic.